You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So, Glenn, the fallout from the Supreme Court's immunity decision continues, this time with a bombshell update in Florida. This is the classified documents case that may very well pave the way for the dismissal of the entire case on two separate fronts. Can you speak on the news that's coming out of Florida right now? Yeah, Brian, maybe the question is, can a stopped train move any slower? The answer is no. So let's go down to Florida, because in the aftermath of the Roberts court bestowing this gift on Donald Trump of absolute presidential immunity, not surprisingly, what did Donald Trump's lawyers do? They beat feet down to Georgia. They filed a motion telling Judge Aileen Cannon, probably the single most receptive audience when it comes to treating Donald Trump you know, with favoritism. They said, listen, we need you to stop this one dead in its tracks, this case, this prosecution. We are asking for a stay because everything has changed. The Supreme Court just said Donald Trump or any president, president has this enormous dose of presidential immunity, either absolute immunity for some things or presumptive immunity for others. And presumptive immunity is kind of like absolute immunity minus one. Um, therefore, we want you to stop this case dead in its tracks. We want you to let us brief up this issue. We'll be taking, you know, a, setting a leisurely pace, you know, as we brief it up. And then we're going to ask for oral arguments. Then we'll ask for supplemental briefings on the presidential immunity issue. And it gets worse, Brian. Uh, a secondary issue that they've raised is, you know what? Justice Thomas said in his separate opinion that had nothing to do with the presidential immunity issue that he thinks Jack Smith might not be lawfully appointed special counsel. So because Clarence Thomas helpfully sent that message, Judge Cannon, we would like you to take up that issue as well. And then, Brian, if I could just quote a couple of lines from this brand new court filing to show um, just how low Donald Trump's lawyers stoop. They say things that I've never seen in a federal pleading and that no self-respecting lawyer would ever say in just the first couple of paragraphs, uh, paragraphs of these, in just the first couple of paragraphs of this new court filing, here are some of the nuggets they include. Unconstitutional investigation and prosecution, shameful ongoing lawfare campaign, Jack Smith's abuse of the criminal justice process, and Biden's desperate and failing attempts to communicate with the voters, not to mention, quote, President Biden's exceedingly weak debate performance on June 27th and Jack Smith's attempt to subvert the upcoming election. Brian, any self-respecting judge would call that language out and would probably sanction the attorneys who had the temerity to put in a court filing those ugly, irrelevant political rants, but that right. is what Donald Trump's lawyers do. Glenn, it's not just the fact that evidence from Trump's time in office would fall under this this new exemption that was that was carved out by the Supreme Court. Now Judge Cannon has a second out, thanks to Clarence Thomas's little Easter egg that, that hints that special counsels prosecuting cases on behalf of the government aren't even legal. So even if Judge Cannon throws out the charges, and even if they're reversed by the 11th Circuit, which we would hope would be the case, how can we have any confidence that the final arbiter of these things, the Supreme Court, won't just back up Judge Cannon at this point? We can't. So the only comfort I can offer our viewers, and this is not being Pollyanna or unrealistic, um, when you read the 119-page Supreme Court opinion, one of the things they say is that a president has no immunity, not absolute, not presumptive, for private acts, for unofficial acts. Here's the thing. I fully expected when this opinion came out that Donald Trump's lawyers would file something saying, well, while he was still president, when he took, let's call it what it is, when he stole all of those classified documents from the federal government and the minute he became a private citizen, he was unlawfully retaining them down in Florida. They may try to say his taking of the documents was some kind of an official act it wasn't that should enjoy some kind of immunity it shouldn't but here's the good news everything that he did all of the crimes he committed all of the crimes he's indicted for after 
he relinquished presidential power, cannot possibly enjoy presidential immunity. So, for example, when he continued to unlawfully retain those classified documents, that's a crime that enjoys no immunity. When he obstructed justice by defying a grand jury subpoena that was basically a court order directing him to return all of those classified documents, that is not an official presidential act. It's a private act, and he enjoys no immunity for it. And when he was mishandling national defense information, which much of this information was, that violates our nation's espionage laws, and he was doing it as a private citizen. So the good news is, here's the big if, Brian, and if always does a lot of heavy lifting when we're dealing with Judge Cannon, if she's an honest broker of the law, she will have to reject 95% of Donald Trump's claims that he enjoys absolute immunity for his crimes. He might get a little bit, he's not entitled to it, but he might get a little bit for that first day when he was still president and he took the documents, but everything thereafter does not enjoy immunity, even under the majority opinions ruling from the Supreme Court. All right, Glenn, if, I hope I'm not misinterpreting this new doc doctrine laid out by the Supreme Court, but if you can't use evidence of official acts and the classified documents at the core of this case are official acts, they're evidence of official acts, how do you prosecute someone like Donald Trump for stealing classified documents when you can't even enter into evidence the classified documents themselves? It's a great question and one that can't be answered. Why? Because the su Supreme Court just set out a test that is not only unique, there is no such test in the law that they just announced. They made it up out of whole cloth, and now they're throwing that bomb into all of the courts in which Donald Trump is being prosecuted, and they're telling the trial court judges, you figure it out. These are imponderables, that question you just posed. Let's break it down. The Supreme Court said you can't introduce evidence of anything that Donald Trump did that might be an official act to help prove a crime that was an unofficial act. But you ask the perfect question. Well, what if he took the documents as part of an official act, which he didn't, mind you, on the available evidence. But if he did, well then, under the Supreme Court test, does that mean Judge Cannon has the opportunity to suppress, in other words, throw out all of the documents and prohibit that they can be used as evidence? If so, one, it makes no sense, and two, it is likely game over for the prosecution of Donald Trump down in Florida. I would say it's hard for me to believe that that's the way this issue is going to resolve itself, but with Judge Cannon and certainly with these, you know, Byzantine indecipherable tests being spewed out by the Supreme Court, you know, it, it is a jump ball. It is anybody's guess as to how this is going to play out. One last question here, and I think I'm going to search for some silver lining here. Let's say that Judge Cannon, now emboldened by what the Supreme Court has done, both re with regard to this sweeping immunity and Clarence Thomas's little Easter egg, this little his little uh, nudge to Judge Cannon, letting her know that that she can also dismiss on the grounds that Jack Smith isn't allowed to prosecute a case on behalf of the government. Would it be better for Judge Cannon now to just dismiss the case in deference to Trump and just get this thing out of the courtroom uh, knowing that the 11th Circuit may overturn it and that it could eventually get to the Supreme Court where maybe they'll have some shred of integrity and allow it to stand on its face because, again, the illegal retention of classified documents was an act that Donald Trump committed as a private citizen, but at least it can get us moving and, and, and we wouldn't just be stuck in this interminable waiting period for Judge Cannon to just do something. So at least we would get some movement and just get off of this stop train, to use your earlier analogy, that we're stuck on right now. Yeah, so interminable delays, I think, is, is a great way to put it, because if this thing continues to be litigated to death um, endlessly, as Judge Cannon seems inclined to let happen, you know, who, who knows when we could get any resolution of the question whether a uh, former president of the United States stole some of our most closely guarded, you know, classified and national defense secrets, and then goodness knows how he may have exploited them to his advantage 
and endangered our national security. But you know, he, here's kind of my bottom line in response to your question. What Judge Cannon now knows is she has at least one receptive justice on the yeah. Supreme Court, Clarence Thomas, who I, ha I feel compelled to add, Brian, he did something that no judge or justice is permitted to do. He rendered what's what we call an advisory opinion. In 1911, the Supreme Court said, we don't render advisory opinions. We don't offer advice or possible resolutions of things that are not before us, questions that haven't been briefed or argued. But that's what Clarence Thomas did, and it's dirty, and it's unethical, and it feels nefarious to me. But he basically gave permission to Judge Cannon, saying, why don't you go ahead and dismiss the case? Why don't you find that Jack Smith was not lawfully appointed special counsel because I've got your back when the right. case makes it up to the Supreme Court. Now, mind you, every other judge, every other court that has had to deal with this issue of whether special counsel or independent counsel are lawful and are properly used under our constitutional construct, including the Supreme Court, have ruled Yes, it's proper, but you know, Judge Cannon, perhaps listening to Justice Thomas, may take a flyer on ruling otherwise and dismissing the case. Well, let me ask. Let me ask the question this way: Where do you think we would have better luck to see some accountability handed down? Would it be with Judge Cannon, or would it be to just have her dismiss this case, get it through the Eleventh Circuit? Doesn't really matter what they rule because it's going to be appealed up to the Supreme Court anyway, and then allow the Supreme Court to rule on this question. Where do you think that that you know we'll have better better a better chance of some accountability actually being handed down? Well, I've lost all confidence in Judge Cannon's impartiality and her ethics, so. I think anything that results in Judge Cannon being out of the mix um, is a good thing in the long term, of course, if the case ends up back in, in the Supreme Court, which just sort of bestowed this obscene level of presidential immunity on Donald Trump. I'm not optimistic that they will get this right. However, I think all things considered, I would rather Judge Cannon just dismiss the case on some pretense and let's get this thing working through the 11th right. Circuit Court of Appeals, which may very well get it right. I would expect them to get it right. They got the last Trump litigation right when they reversed Judge Cannon and said she abused her discretion in favor of Donald Trump. They'll get it right, and that may put some pressure on the Supreme Court to perhaps consider getting it right. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter at this point because we know it's gonna be appealed up to the Supreme Court anyway. And so we might as well just move this process along as it is. So, you know, hopefully we do see some type of, you know, I mean, it's it seems bizarre to even advocate for this, but like if Judge Cannon isn't gonna be a fair arbiter anyway, let her dismiss the case so we can just get this thing in front of the 11th Circuit. Hopefully they will rule correctly and then just work through the inevitability of getting this thing in front of the Supreme Court. So with that said, we will of course stay on top of this. For those watching right now, if you wanna follow along with Trump's prosecutions, not just in Florida, but everywhere, uh, and especially as they relate to this new Supreme Court ruling, please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels are right here on this screen. I'm Brian Teller Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.